Okay, so there comes a time, if you're using Box2D, where you want to put things on the screen that aren't just a box or a circle, right? Well, an important thing to realize is, first of all, that what we are actually doing is um, all of our examples so far are literally representing the Box2D physics on the screen. So for example, when we set up a polygon shape, which is a box with a width and a height, this is what Box2D thinks is in its physics world. And then we go and draw it on the screen, literally, this way. <laughs> Glasses are dirty. So we, we are representing that box literally just as a rectangle in processing. But we very easily could have you know, loaded a P image that had you know, some hearts in it. And we could have even you know, drawn a few lines on the side to give it like some fur. So it's like this furry pillow with hearts on it. And it's going to look right, right? The key thing here is that what we tell Box2D about the physics only needs to approximate the way we visually render on the screen. And for the most part, it's going to look right. You know, certainly the creators of Angry Birds aren't modeling every single nuance of the bird's design. There's really just a circle under there that's knocking into a bunch of boxes. So this is one of the things that we need to think about. And, and later on, once we look at joints, we're going to see even more elaborate ways of creating skeletons for complex designs that we might want to actually visualize in the processing sketch. So, but there comes a time where just a mere rectangle or a mere circle is not enough of an approximation. So um, there, the, for example, let's just say you wanted to make some type of creature-like thing or a little alien design that you know, looks like this. So it's sort of a terrible drawing. But how would you implement this in Box2D? Certainly, we could kind of use a bounding box approach and create a box that just kind of approximate the design. But we could get much more specific about this. And there are two ways of doing it. So the two ways that, we're gonna just, that I'm going to describe and look at in a couple examples, one way is to use set the vertices manually of a polygon shape. So I'm going to call that custom polygon. So that is strategy number one. We could create a custom polygon. Um, strategy number two involves um, multiple shapes attached to one body. So these are two strategies we can do. One is we could create a custom polygon. Two, we could create multiple shapes and attach them to the same body. The truth is uh, two could also include one. We could create multiple custom polygons and attach them to the same body. So let's look at how this works. Let's think about first the custom polygon, and then we'll look at the multiple shape scenario in a moment. So custom polygon, what do I mean by that? What I mean is instead of just saying, hey, the polygon's going to be a box with a width and a height, we're going to set the vertices individually. This is very similar to the way that we set the vertices for a chain shape. The difference here is we have an enclosed polygon shape. So we could set vertex, 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 and we want to set all of these vertices um, using, remember, world coordinates. So we, if we think of these as pixel coordinates, we're going to have to convert them to world coordinates before we set them. Um, and um, we're going to use the same exact method. We can create an array of VEC2 objects all with these locations. And the polygon shape, right, polygon shape object has a very simple function called set where we can pass that array in. So we can say, so before we said set as box, we give it a width and a height. Now we're just saying set the vertices according to this array of vertices. Now there's two important aspects of this, and I guess I'll just erase this down here and come back to this in a moment, that we need to remember. One is convex shapes only. Boy, I hope this is still true in Box2D. Stuff kind of changes sometimes. But convex shapes only. There's actually a new version of JBox2D, so I might have to update all of these someday, but I uh, haven't, haven't, haven't updated yet. But convex shapes only. A concave shape is a shape whose surface turns inward, right? So this is a convex shape, if I'm drawing this correctly. And here's a concave shape. Box2D cannot handle collisions for concave shapes, however it can for convex shapes. And you're asking yourself, but I want to do Pac-Man, and how do I do Pac-Man? How could I do this? Well, one thing that's interesting, remember we just said there's a multiple shape approach? Well, interestingly enough, any con, I have notes over there, so I keep looking, any concave shape you can make out of two convex ones. So, right, if I just draw a line here, this is a convex shape A, 
This is a convex shape B. Stick those two together, and we have a concave shape. I can never remember the difference between concave and convex. This is very much of a struggle. Okay, so that's one thing that's important. The other thing is box 2D expects the vertices in clockwise order. So when you're giving the vertices in this array, you've got to start in clockwise order. However, you're most likely going to be thinking of the vertices in pixels, as we're going to see in the example in a moment. So you actually want to create the vertices in counterclockwise, counterclockwise for pixels, because if you're converting them one at a time, they're going to be, remember the y-axis is flipped, they're actually going to, you're going to end up giving them to box D in clockwise order. You know, all of this stuff sounds like a real big pain in the neck, and the truth of the matter is, it is a big pain in the neck. And that's why, you know, we want to be careful about when do we use box D, when do we not use box D. It's totally worth all this extra effort when, when you really need box D for a project, and when you don't need it, it's not worth all this extra effort. So, okay, so this is strategy number one, the custom polygon approach. Let's take a look at the example. Um, this is example 5.4. I'm going to run it, and you can see, oh, I forgot to change the size. But you can see, here are all these shapes. They're custom polygons. And look at this. I'm setting all of these vertices in the code in an array and converting them. And I'm converting them. They aren't coordinates. They're vectors. These are vectors that are all pointing from the center of the shape. So that's one thing that I didn't mention, is that what we're thinking of is if you think of this as like 0, 0, these locations, you can think of them as vectors pointing from the center of the shape. Again, you want to think of them in clock, counterclockwise, so you get them in clockwise order. And you can see them here. You can, you know, as an exercise to yourself, is like go and get this code, try to like get a piece of graph paper and draw out those vertices, see if you get the shape that's appearing in the examples. And right here, we can see we make the polygon shape, and it's very simple. PS.set. So instead of set as box with a width and a height, just set with an array of vertices. So that's how you can make a custom polygon shape. And then, again, we're just drawing it, begin shape, end shape with the standard drawing ways that you do in processing, but you might choose to visualize it in a different way. So that's option number one. Now, option number two, in some ways is actually, I, maybe I should have started with it, in some ways is a little bit simpler, I think. So the example that I have just creates something that resembles a lollipop, is I think what I called it, the lollipop object. So we could make an object like this, a little kind of person with no legs or arms, right, out of a rectangle, a polygon shape, and a circle shape. So what we're actually doing in our steps here, define a body, create a body, create a shape, create a fixture, attach the body to, attach the shape to body with fixture, we're going to do this n times. So we have, to, we have to define the body and create the body, then we create the polygon shape box and attach it to the body. Then we create the circle shape box and attach it to the body. Now, if we just went ahead and did that without thinking it through, what we might end up getting is a shape that looks like this, right? Because these shapes are always attached in a way to the center of the body. And one of the things in the example that you're going to see is that the circle is given an offset location along the y-axis. So one of the additions we're going to have to do here when we create the shape is set and offset, if, in fact, we want these shapes to be offset from each other in some way. So again, it's really up to you, you know, what, you know to try to come up with some scenario, like maybe you want to make a three-leaf clover, and you could do that out of uh, a rectangle and three circles or something. I don't know. There's come up with some type of scenario where you want to make a complex shape. Figure out where's the center, what are the shapes, what are their properties, what are the radius of the circles, what's the width and height of the rectangle, what are their offsets along the x and y axis from the center. And let's take a look at a scenario that, uh, of that in code. Um, if I come over here, this is example 5.5 multiple shapes. And if I just run it, we're going to see here that as I click, oh, and I forgot. Uh, someday I'll edit this out that there's um, a mistake in here. And I'm going to go back to this and run it again. Oh, and I'm not even over here. Hi. <laughs> okay. You know, these aren't going to be perfect, especially not today because I have a cold and I've been doing this for hours at this point. But okay. So um, here you can see if you can like kind of zoom in there, we can see we have these nice shapes which are a rectangle attached to a circle. Two shapes attached to the same body. 
So I'm going to zoom back out and we can see how is this done here. Well, we have step one, define the body, and step two, create the body. And now look at this, create a circle shape and create a polygon shape. Two shapes. And right here, this is a kind of key line of code. This is where we're defining that offset, the circles MP. Dot set. So this is like, again, wading through all this documentation. You know, hopefully it's in an example. If not, you're going to have to sort of look it up, detect it. But uh, a shape object has a variable called m underscore p, which is its offset position as a vector. And we can set it to our offset, which we, I guess, had previously had defined. Um, oh, no, we defined it right here and converted it. We made a vector in pixels, then we converted it, and then we assigned it. So there's all these steps, right? This is that same thing. This offset, we're probably thinking of it as pixels. Like, oh, this circle is 50 pixels above the rectangle. So if we look at that right here, we create the vector with a height above that. Then we have to convert it from pixels to world and then set that as its offset. So there's a lot of these steps, a lot of these gobbledygook kind of steps to get comfortable with. And then remember this, we need to attach both shapes of the bodies, each with its own fixture. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned, by the way, is there is a fix there's code for a fixture shorthand. Look at this. Remember in the other examples, we would say fixture definition equals new fixture definition, set the friction, set the restitution, set the, set the density. You can do that if you need to custom manage those physics parameters. But one thing that you can also do is if you just want to use the default friction and the default restitution, you can in one line of code attach the, bod the shape to the body with a fixture. And it's just called body.createFixture, pass in the shape, and the, the value one there is the density. So the one thing you can set is the density. So, um, uh, so another thing that's just in this example that I'm noticing right now is a body can have an initial velocity. It can also have an initial angular velocity. So that's why when we run these, you can see that they're already kind of moving and spinning just when I click the mouse and adding them to the screen. OK, so this is, a, this is a lot, but hopefully you have a sense of, OK, if I just want a box, polygon shape set as box. If I just want a circle, circle shape with a radius. If I want a more complex shape, I could define a custom polygon, or I could stick multiple shapes together. And these examples 5.4 and 5.5 will kind of lead you down that path. So if you're looking for an exercise, design some kind of crazy alien looking shape that you think you could never make in Box2D, and see if you can build it up with custom polygons and multiple shapes.